Good morning. Um, just for context, this is September the 10th, just so you know that when you see this, this is some considerable time ago. So I woke up on Sunday morning, my left knee was about the size of a football and bright red and you could fry an egg on it. And uh, we, went, we saw the doctor Monday and I got sent straight down to A&E and we managed to get out of A&E about one in the morning in the end. So now I'm hooked up with this. So I've got this tube in here and I've got a a hand grenade full of strong antibiotics. I've got to go back in tomorrow morning, I've got to get another one of these and then on Thursday they're going to do some blood tests and see how the infection is regressing or disappearing, whatever word you want to use. But for the moment, yeah I'm, I'm not playing golf at the moment, but this is the important thing. This infection will go and I'll be back playing. It's not like I've torn something, torn a muscle or a ligament or a tendon and I'm going to be out for months. I'm just going to be inconvenienced for a week or so. One thing I found out is the in sickness and in health of the wedding vows does not include wiping your bum. So with all of this tubing and stuff dangling down I've well, you, you just get on with it, don't you? So, a few questions. First question was, uh, some guy, after probably watching about a minute and a half of one video, suggested that my handicap was somewhere in the 20s. Left a stupid comment and left. My actual India index is 5.7 which is technically out of date. I've only put three cards in this year. I didn't put many in last year, maybe seven or eight. Um, it's been so wet for two years that when it's dry, and it's lamping it down now, when it's dry I don't think, oh I need to enter a competition and put a card in. I think I need to get out there with a the camera because I've run out of stuff and I need to make a video. So. When the weather's dry, you can do both. When the weather's wet, you can only do one or the other, and I choose to make videos rather than go out and play in a competition. But the index doesn't really tell you the whole story, does it? Most places give me five or six shots. Um, course down the road, a few miles down the road, if I go and play the yellow tees, I get three. And I course over in that direction, down that road, and if I play the competition tees, I get eight. So that's a spread of six shots, which I think is a bit odd. But it's this latest handicap minus the stroke racing. So if you go and play a course which is two and a half shots under the par, you get hammered. If you go and play a, a course that's two and a half shots over the par, then you, you just get this inflated handicap. I'm sure they'll get it right eventually. And that handicap rating takes me on to the next. I've had several comments over the years saying you are not a professional, you should not be teaching. Well I don't teach, I, I make suggestions. You know I suggest have a go at this or have a go at that. Uh, I don't teach, I don't give lessons. But years ago to become an assistant pro you could become an assistant pro with a handicap of four. Now you just need a handicap index of 6.4 for a man and I think it's something like 8.6 for, for a woman. So as I'm under 6.4 I could go to a golf club tomorrow and say hey I'd like to become an assistant pro. I get a job in the shop and then I go take my exams and then I could be teaching and doing club fitting. Me. Which is stupid. You know, they've, they've... I would say they've raised the bar, but they haven't. They've lowered the bar, haven't they? I think there's a guy down in Devon who did just that. He became a fitting pro on the back of having a seven handicap or something. 
no idea how he's getting on, not that bothered. But it does show that I could be a pro if I wanted to be, <laughs> which, is, which is laughable. But no, I don't teach. I make suggestions. And there was another question, who do you watch on YouTube? Do you watch Danny Moore? Do you watch this? Do you watch that? And I don't, uh, as a general rule. I'm not a believer in YouTube golf lessons. If you've got a problem, you need eyes on that problem, which means you have to go and see a pro, which means you need two or three lessons, maybe four. And if you're going to have three or four, then you might as well have six and include the entire game, uh, pitching, chipping, putting, and then go out and play nine holes and, you know, go the whole hog. And it'll cost you far less money than a driver. So... I'm not a believer in YouTube golf lessons, but there is a golf pro I watch. His name is Fitzy Golf Pro. He's down in Australia. He's um, not a young man. He doesn't hit balls 320 yards into a TV screen. Uh, and he does kind of like um, very simple, very easy to understand tips videos. So he's, he's a good one to watch. Um, his latest one is about the golf glove and whether you've got wear on the heel and wear on the thumb. And he, in that video he basically describes exactly what I do. So it was useful for me to watch that video. Uh, some time ago somebody mentioned you don't lose golf balls. Well, as a general rule, I don't. I wear them out. That's why I've got a practice bag full of worn out Pro V1s. But I do lose balls, of course I do. Of course I hit it sideways from time to time. I've just played with Neville on the holes where I'm recording him and I'm playing alongside him without me appearing on camera. Because I'm making changes, I started hitting it sideways and I lost two balls in that round on holes that I wasn't playing, so to speak. Earlier this summer I lost four balls playing with my sons. Again, it was going sideways. I've had quite a few problems this year. Primarily because I had such a long break over the winter, thanks to the rain. So yeah, I do lose golf balls. When I was at Lillybrook, I think I had a round, I lost three balls. And then I had a round in the autumn, I lost three balls underneath the leaves. Um... Yeah, of course I lose golf balls, but I do tend to wear them out. I think these days I don't hit it far enough to lose them. I haven't got enough energy to hit the ball hard enough so the side spin takes the ball vroom, and gone. But yeah, of course I lose balls. I just don't lose that many that often. What's, what's more likely to happen with me is that I will play... 10 rounds of golf, not lose a single ball, and then on the 11th round of golf, I'll make up for it by losing three or four. It just happens that way. Talking about lessons, though, I, I do find it um, amusing that um, I, I get golf tips in the comments now. You need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do the other. You know, when it comes to chipping and pitching. Um, I started playing my golf on clay. All the courses around here are clay. So in this, if we have a dry summer, they're rock hard. And they're meadow grass. So the meadow grass does not survive very well in uh, dry conditions. So you're always playing kind of like bare lies off concrete basically. So you learn to chip and pitch back foot. You learn to hit your irons that little bit further back than you would on lush grass. And even your three wood. If you compare my ball positions to Genevieve Ling, who plays in Malaysia and she plays on the on the ladies tour out there, then you've got different grass and you've got sunshine, you've got warmth you've got a lot of rain, you've got a lot of tropical rain. So the grass is very lush and the ball sits up on it. When it's like that, then you play the ball forward. 
Jen plays her six iron further forward than I play my three wood. And there isn't any way that that can change. I've played golf so long on clay, there is no way that I can change to playing golf on lush grass. Because we don't have lush grass. There's a few courses which are better than most. But it's meadow grass and it's clay, you play the ball back. You know, when I do a chipping video and I say, you need a club to go up and over and a club to run out. I'll never tell you which clubs to use, because I don't know you, I don't know what course you play on. If you're playing on links, you're probably playing a 7-iron, chip and run. If you play on one of those parkland courses where all the greens are raised 6 or 8 feet above the surrounding area, you're not using a 7-iron, you're using a sand wedge, you may even be using a lob wedge. So I'm not going to tell you what clubs to use, I'm not going to teach what you should do. I'd just say, you know, find, find two clubs that you need to get round your course and concentrate your practice on those two clubs. Because time is limited. If you're retired and you're keen and you can go to the golf course every single day and spend hours practicing, without going out to play. You only you, you go to the golf course six times a week but you only actually play twice and you spend four days just practicing then yeah sure you've, you've got time to practice every club in the bag for chipping. So but if you're working the amount of time you got is, is minimal. So no I don't consider myself a teacher I consider myself somebody who makes suggestions. You take that suggestion, uh, if, it, uh, if you feel that it's useful to you, you can go away and try it. If you don't think it's useful to you, then you discard it, don't you? Now I had another comment, oh this is going back a few months. Uh, some guy, um, what did he say now? He said you play boring old man golf. Golf is only fun if you're hitting your driver as hard as you can, even if you lose three balls around. I asked him his handicap and he said 16. I said, well, there you go. You, you are potentially an eight handicap golfer. Because if you stop losing the golf balls and you stop, and the balls that you don't lose, which are in awkward positions, which lead to a bogey, You'd easily be an 8 handicap golfer, not a 16 handicap golfer. He, he didn't reply, which um, suggests that uh, my argument actually made sense to him and he couldn't defend himself. But yeah, if, if you're hitting your driver as hard as you can on every hole and you're losing three balls around, that's expensive. If nothing else, that is expensive. So yeah, I, I played old man boring golf long before I became old man because I found that was the best way to shoot my best score was to be boring. To hit my driver 85 to 90%. Um, there was a golf pro that I used to play with occasionally, um, he would drive it about 270. Um, and I asked him one day, how far can you hit it? He'd, he'd, just, he'd actually just teed off and he was only about 10 or 15 yards beyond me. I said to him, how, how far can you hit it? And he took another ball and teed it up. And he got it out there up to about 295. And he said, I can hit it that hard, but sometimes I can't find it. So I'm, I'm much happier hitting it 270. I can find that. And that's what boring old man golf is. It's not trying to do something that you can't do. Boring old man golf is sticking to your game plan, swinging within yourself, which means more often than not you use the middle of the club rather than all round the face 
and you hit a better shot because you're not swinging flat out and you look at the trouble on the hole and you concoct a plan to avoid the trouble and sometimes a bogey without going in trouble is better than trying for that par and walking off with double and triple because you haven't avoided the problems on the hole. So yeah, uh, I remember Nick Faldo um, he was in an interview and, and they said the same thing to him oh you, you play boring golf and I think he'd had a poor round you know something like a 76 or whatever and he said I wish I could play boring golf at the moment it's a bit wayward a bit here and there left and right army golf yeah you can't beat boring golf you can't be knocking it in the fairway knocking it on the green two putts move on knock it in the fairway knocking it on the green or very close to the green chip and a putt par move on I don't see anything exciting about losing golf balls. Anyway, this is going to go on far too long because once I get rabbiting in front of a camera, I, I keep going forever. So uh, I'm kind of like stuck with this for a while. Well, certainly to tonight and tomorrow. Uh, God knows how I'm going to sleep with this thing. I've been watching it to see if it actually goes down. There's, there's 24 hours worth in there of antibiotics or vodka. I don't know, one or the other. Um, it does seem to be collapsing in on itself, so that must mean it's it's going in the arm, all right. And um, somehow I've got to figure out how have how to have a shower in the morning. So if you've got any questions, just fire them in, and eventually I will get round to actually answering them. And hopefully by the time you see this, I shall be running around like a spring gazelle. As, as if I ever did or could and that this infection will be long gone. I, mean, I said where did it come from? He said, I don't know. It just sometimes happens out of the blue, no reason at all. Ta-ra!